two countries that possess nuclear weapons and they are in a situation of conflict, to give up them. It's much more difficult. Even though we need to stress the fact that nuclear weapons are something that should be never used, even though we are absolutely in favor of all the initiatives which are taken to show the humanitarian consequences of nuclear weapons, we have to remind that the situation of conflict where nuclear weapons are present and WD in general are present is something that needs particular attention. We cannot detach the two issues of possessing of nuclear weapons, possession of nuclear weapons with the issue of conflicts. And conflicts have many forms. And many forms, and uh, they are related, as in the case of India Pakistan, to all old um, contentious issues like Kashmir. But I would say that this, and that's the argument I wanted to make. The spread of radical movements in many places in the world, including from, I would say, West Asia and Middle East to South Asia to maybe Northeast Asia, where the presence of, of certain kind of, I would say, strong extremist, extremist, radical, you name it, a movement is a powerful announcer of conflicts. Sectarianism is uh, an instrument where conflicts are reinforced. Way. If the Sunni are divided by the Shia, and they feel that the distinction between the two groups is unbridgeable, you cannot make a bridge, then this is a sort of conflict where, which is particularly stable, since when, when people are they feel that they are part of conflicts, not for what they do, but for what they basically are. Then you have a way, you have a situation which is very difficult to handle. So I would say that uh, the situation of conflict, which certainly involves state, state processing weapons of master sexual in general, is enhanced by the spread of radical movements and the push for discrimination according to identifies identifying ideologies. It can be religious, it can be something different. North Korea is not religion, even though it's maybe a, a way of his own um, religious attitudes. It's, there is a sort of orthodoxical connotation. But I would say that uh, we in Papua are very much interested in this and that's the reason why we try to help in the field of conflict resolutions. Conflict resolution means uh, dealing with, uh, with problems that are generally difficult to handle but can be positively, positively approached by something which is our key word, to become our key word, namely dialogue across the divide. If we're able to facilitate dialogue, then we can help solving some conflicts or bringing, we can help in bring, bringing some conflicts in a positive direction. And um, so we are trying to cooperate in the sense of facilitating dialogue. And I would say that uh, what we have done in uh, between in Kashmir is uh, something that goes in that direction. When we uh, talk about what we did between uh, uh, Afghani groups and uh, the Taliban, is something that goes in that direction. When we talk about uh, uh, the situation in Gaza and the attempt to uh, make possible understanding in the area which is particularly critical between all the actors in Israel, all the different positions inside the Palestinians and so on, we're trying to help the situation of conflict not to skyrocket. Syria is a very sad example and I'm looking now with Elias 
in, uh, in, uh, in front and I feel that we have been uh, unsuccessful even though we attempt to do something and not only us but all the world has been unsuccessful to stop the massacre which have reached a dimension which is unbelievable destruction of 200, 300,000 people mass movement, one million people expelled all the cities and the, um, and the historical past destroyed and uh, yes, also the use of weapons of mass destruction, chemical weapons. So you see, this is something that if we were, if there was a previous, an attempt of bridging positions and avoiding creating space for specific uh, radical group, then we'd not be in such a terrible situation we are now. Notice also that Syria is also that, uh, a field where you can create, uh, in fact, antagonism between uh, different international actors like Russia and the West or Turkey. So yes, there is now an attempt to make to bridge up this different position and have a conference bringing all the international actors to discuss about Syria. Sure. Very good. We try to, we will try to help in the future if we can. But it's a very serious problem, and in fact, again, as I was saying before, is a problem that enhancing sectarianism, Sunni versus Shia, uh, Alawites connected with Shia, uh, ethnic division, Kurds versus Arabs. You see, these things are particularly. Uh, complicated to be solved. If you, if you imagine what happened for a quote-unquote minor problem, like the distinction between Christ, uh, Catholic and Protestant in, in, uh, in Ireland, you can understand that we are putting in the Middle East, where nuclear weapons and chemical weapons are present, we are putting the seeds for a very long-lasting uh, series of conflicts and antagonism and this is something which is exactly what us and others should prevent uh, that's the reason why we try to uh, say well we need to address the, the the problem of conflict with nuclear weapons uh, and weapons of mass destruction at present and um, i think that The situation of South Asia, I mean, I think we had a, a very interesting uh, overview by General Kidvai of what is the position of Pakistan, and in fact, you see, I'm, I, I'm not making judgment, but I am I'm of any sort, I mean, in one sense. But the point is that there is clearly nuclear weapons which are used as a deterrent for conventional attack. It's a matter of fact, as been. Uh, referred before by General Kibai. Uh, we are not discussing, maybe next time we're going to discuss the Indian strategy in the next conference we're going to have an Indian uh, expert, I mean, a responsible person on nuclear weapon. But irrespective of this, I mean, what we have to understand is that the situation, if someone is, is performing inside India, of a significant terrorist attack, like Mumbai attack plus, or Mumbai attack multiplied by something, then there is the possibility, and in fact every indication that India may consider attacking uh, position inside Pakistan, supposedly where uh, the basis of the terrorist group are. And this can create a conventional conflict and eventually evolve into a nuclear one. So, seen from a different point of view, you see that a small group, a small group, a more small radical group, can have the possibility, theoretically, I'm not saying 
will be high percent probability, but theoretically can have the possibility of generating a nuclear exchange. This will put the September 11 in perspective as a piece of cake. So, in this situation, I think it's very important to help solving, help solving the antagonism between countries and try also to understand the logic of the radical movements and try to get into this difficult problem. One of the difficult problems is try to distinguish between radical movements where you can talk, with whom you can talk, and radical movements where uh, talking is much more difficult. I don't say impossible, but that has been our experience with, the, with all limitation with the Taliban. The Taliban are somehow in between. <laughs> there are some problems, there are some difficulties, but there is a room for understanding. Um, there are groups which are more, uh, I mean, radical groups like Hamas, with my believe, or Hezbollah, a group where you can have some, in fact, discussion, bring them up into a positive confrontation. But um, it's a difficult thing, and it's a it is, a, is a, an environment which is very shaky. You don't understand exactly what to do. You try to do something and then maybe, and then possible. So I think that it's a, um, it's a delicate environment. It's our attempt to contribute to solving conflicts. It's part of our traditional strategy of trying to avoid conflict, in particular nuclear conflicts, especially if we are dealing with specific region. And this is what we've done in the past, and one will go to want to continue in the future. Um, I think that the other issues that would be that, 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 that Papash is working in the direction of avoiding the nuclear exchange, and these issues are to do maybe with the with the U.S. tradition, U.S. Russia, and nuclear. Discussion and debate. One specific issue that I was made, I like to mention is the issue of tactical nuclear weapons. Can we get rid of them inside the, inside Europe, or can we discuss about how to eliminate the role of tactical nuclear weapons, or how to eliminate an excessive reliance on nuclear weapons even inside Europe? But all in all. I would like to make a final comment, since I try to be brief, about the modus operandi of Bagwash. You see, we are, we are not the United Nations. We are not a fraction of the United Nations. We are not the millions of the United Nations. We are a small group of people that relies on a number of staff, which is in the range of two slash three. Uh, then, um, in this sense, uh, we can operate when we have connection, local connection. We are a network more than an organization. And we have to understand the positive and the negative aspect of this. The negative aspect that we don't have enough money and we don't have enough capability of saying we want to decide, we want to intervene with this on this specific issue since this is most important. If we don't have the connection, we will not be able to do it. The positive aspect of being in a network is that we can, if there are people that are willing to help in the direction of solving conflicts or pushing some ideas about nuclear risk, then we can cooperate with a large number of people. We can organize a large number of people that are interested in pursuing this on a voluntary basis. But uh, I don't understand. I don't. I don't want to underestimate the voluntary basis. It's very important. If people tend to think that whatever they do is on the basis of the money they can get, the the the, 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 the role that they can play, it's becoming more difficult. I think there is really a specific situation. The need of understanding 
that serious problem should be talked and discussed and dealt by, with by civil society. In a sense, we are civil society, no more than that. Um, we had some uh, positive uh, results, which are now never decisive result, but a decisive result in the direction of facilitating a different approach, a more positive approach. We had some effect, we have some, uh, what would say, relevance, fairly relevance, I don't want to exaggerate, in the nuclear issue, in the nuclear discussion with Iran, we had some relevance to the Afghan, intra-Afghan dialogue, we had some relevance in the discussion about Kashmir. Since Kashmir is not only a problem of Pakistan versus India, it's also a problem how the population inside Kashmir, outside, are treated and how they feel with respect to the relevant states. Yes, if you go into Kashmir Valley, etc., you understand that there is a lot of problems there irrespective of the relation between India and Pakistan. And these are something that can, in fact, as I was saying before, enhance the conflict and the, con the, con the confrontation with the two countries. So helping in the direction and facilitating discussion is something that can be useful. And we don't do that on the basis of abstract necessity of intervention. We do that when people inside Jammu and Kashmir or Kashmir or as of Kashmir, they say, well, we want to do something. Can you, can we all together help in the direction? Um, then, in this sense, our organization is international. We are not uh, uh, Western. We are even in our, in our uh, structure, we emphasize that we have a, a a South Asian president, we have an Italian secretary general, we have an Iranian head of the, of, the, um, of the council, we have an American head of the executive committee, and we have a council which is large and multinational. Um, I think there is a lot to do that we can do in the future, along these lines, reinforcing positive results which have been handed over by the international community with the contribution of Bawash, and uh, um, try to understand that there is a need of, uh, of uh, blocking the development of conflictuality and tensions that in fact is one of the key elements in terms of prevention of catastrophic nuclear explosions. And I think that with that I would like to conclude since we are very much also late. <laughs> and uh, uh, I don't know whether I want to have questions. I think uh, we must all thank uh, Paolo for that uh, wide ranging report of a complex of activities which he has been able to conduct as Secretary General. I'm sure there are questions and I think we should leave some time for questions before we break and then go on to the working groups. So can we have a, a few questions? Yes, sir. Speaking, I agree with uh, uh, what you have talked, and uh, I, I really uh, appreciate uh, the tremendous efforts you have made for uh, our outreach uh, activities. And, uh, and uh, I, I think, you, uh, for example, uh, it, it, it might be a good idea. Uh, for example, you invited. Uh, uh, yesterday, the representatives of the uh, United States and Russia, and they uh, made a 
good, pre uh, good presentations, but at the same time, I'm afraid a little bit uh, their argument uh, uh, was uh, rather conventional. I, I think uh, if uh, you could ask ask them, uh, you, you, if you could have asked them to, uh, for example, focus on Ukraine issue. Uh, in Ukraine, uh, uh, they uh, talked on how they, uh, both Russia and the United States uh, have made or will make an effort to avoid escalation of armed conflicts and even accidental nuclear wars, then their this, uh, presentation could be more exciting. So I really hope, uh, uh, I agree that you, you have, uh, you, uh, and I appreciate you uh, have invited the uh, Russian and US representatives, but uh, as you said, we are interested in more uh, concrete uh, nuclear issues in the sub-specific uh, mode, uh, topics. So that, that's my comment. Can we take a collection of a few more questions? Yes. Uh, my name is Haifa Baraki. I come from Palestine, and so I come from one of these areas of conflict which Kokosh uh, has been really uh, very actively involved trying to solve, which is the question of Palestine-Israel. Now, although uh, up till now it hasn't been solved, but it hasn't been also solved on the uh, UN level. Yeah, the UN has uh, issued many, many, many uh, resolutions that were accepted by the world and, but Israel has not really accepted any of these, and so far we are still at point zero. We in Palestine really do appreciate what Akbash has been doing, and especially Paolo, who has been coming and going really for many, many, many times, trying at the beginning to bring, bring the Israelis and Palestinians together to sit at, around the table and understand what's going on, hoping that this kind of uh, communication might really uh, cover the gap that is being uh, on the political level in, in Israel. So we really thank, uh, in the name of the Palestinian being the only Palestinian here in this conference today, I think there is a colleague, but I haven't met him, Hussam. Where are you, Hussam? I don't know. <laughs> but we not, really we do appreciate what Hussam has been doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. It may be a naive question because this is the first time I'm attending a Bangladesh conference. Um, I think I can see two legs of the three legs that Bangladesh has. Uh, but I can't see the third leg yet, and I wonder if we become evident as the conference goes on, so I'd like Aldo or yourself, Mr. Chairman, to respond. Um, I think the world affairs component of the Conference of Science and World Affairs, uh, you have dealt it very, very adequately, uh, and uh, I think have done some tremendous contributions, uh, first in bringing people together, and giving them a place where they can speak frankly. Uh, and in the confidence that they will not, their, their words will not be misconstrued. <laughs> I think you also organized this conference and gave us a short treatment into what our humanitarian uh, perspective should be and how we can bring our humanity to the forefront. So those two legs I think are okay. What I do not see adequately yet, and maybe it is there in the next few sessions, uh, is the science component. Uh, because I think in the initial conference, uh, Lord Russell and 
Albert Einstein, uh, Dr. Albert Einstein, the scientists who felt that science also could contribute to this. That is the part that I have sensed in informal conversations at the dinner table, but I do not see formally in the sessions. Uh, is this the norm, or is there some way in which science can be brought to the forefront? Thank you. Thank you. We all are very appreciative to Paolo for his active uh, work and to the work of the Central Apparatus of Pagwash, but I think it should be mentioned here that Pagwash consists of several layers of activity and it probably would give a little bit wrong image if we stick to the phrase by Paolo that Pagwash has two slash three people who are working. In fact, there, are, uh, there is a past variety. Stop. Stop. Yes, yes, but there is uh, there are at least uh, three levels of work in Pagwash. There is a wide variety of national Pagwash groups, and unfortunately, this time for some, uh, well, we are not planning a meeting of national Pagwash group, which we normally had all the uh, previous uh, annual or biannual meetings, and we do not plan a report of um, head of council and head of executive committee. Again, uh, council has more than about 50 people who are working, who are communicating. So uh, I simply wanted to suggest that maybe a short written memo should be placed on paper by Paolo Cotter-Rosino describing some general parameters of the movement of the organization of the network. Uh, quantity of meetings, uh, geography of the meetings, uh, some statistics, how many of them are on world affairs, how many of them are on science, some statistics of meetings of uh, council, exchange communication. Before we had the periodical journal, which was printed on paper. Now we don't have it, we have instead some information on the site, but again, uh, biennial meetings are a rare opportunity to uh, compress all this information and present the variety of work of organization in uh, all its uh, phases and all levels. Uh, this is why I simply wanted to uh, add that there are a lot of regional activities in Pakosh uh, which are not limited to Middle East or uh, say South Asia. There are uh, meetings of the European groups, uh, there are um, still Russian-American dialogue and uh, it, uh, all of that probably should be somehow uh, described and uh, this is a kind of request. It would be very, very good if Secretary General would uh, to say two pages leaflet, which would be a compression of his report and circulate it at least uh, during the meeting or after the meeting. Thank you very much. Last question. Thank you. My name is Anisa Hassoun. I'm from the Egyptian Pagos. Just wanted to reaffirm the, the fact that the results and activities of Pagos is not only is not only summarized by uh, the burden on the Secretary General, the President, the Chairman of the Council, all those people, but it is a collective outcome of all the Pagos groups everywhere in the world. Other than that, we are just bystanders uh, listening and not doing anything on our part. So maybe if, uh, next time uh, each package group would like to submit uh, one uh, page or something like that focusing on the activities done under the umbrella of the international package. Thank you. Very quickly to Onishi's son, I yes, there is always a, when you choose, uh, you ask someone to do something. There is always something which is left over. I think that we had the, we had the privilege of having uh, both yesterday the Russian and uh, uh, American uh, presentation and today the, the General Kivai presentation. Uh, we had, uh, I think, an input on how. Uh, disarmament or non-disarmament of our nuclear weapons are seen. And uh, I think it's important that we understand that this is somehow the reality. Uh, so we have to deal with, if we deal with nuclear disarmament, we have to, if you want, have this uh, understanding of what is going on. Then we can, I would say, I would say to General Kilvai that I disagree with the fact of using nuclear weapons as a deterrent against conventional attacks. I 
would say with Anita and Mr. Gugliano that they should do more about localizando. Fine. But the point is that they should do not individually more. I mean, I'm talking about the representative of the countries. Uh, that's exactly what the purpose of this, of this uh, interaction is. We listen how the situation is, and then we try to understand how we can contribute. And, you know, uh, then you could have different choices. Yes, you could discuss about the grade. Agree. It's fine. But the point is that one has to limit it to a certain extent. And we, we thought about having something specific about nuclear weapons more, more uh, here than in other international meetings. We don't need a series of excuses anymore. No, 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 no. She excuses. No, I understand. But the point is that what you consider, what you consider excuses, or you consider the reality. So when you have, when you when you want to make changes, you want to say, okay, then this is the way in which things should be done and organized. I agree that there are excuses or not excuses. It depends. But the point is that the reality is this, and we have to convey the message to people who have a responsibility, saying that the international community, for what we can interpret, would like to have more protection against the nuclear risks and having more disarmament. In terms of uh, Palestine Israel, uh, the situation is not the same as some time ago. The situation between Palestine and Israel is much worse. It's incredibly much worse. The situation is on the crash. It's, a, it's like a train accelerated towards a wall. And um, so no, no reason for optimism. No reason for optimism. The only thing we can say is to say, well, look, the international community should do more in order to interact in the situation they should not tolerate anymore, just to make an example, that 1.8 million of people in Gaza are kept in jail. But, since we are frank, I would like to also to make a point that we invited here the only person that we have in Gaza and he has been denied the visa. So, I mean, that's something that should be also held in consideration. We should have a better understanding from everybody, including Japan, that uh, something should be taken in a more, I would say, articulated way. Science. Well, science, science, I'm a physicist. You see, if you look at the, uh, the, the Russian eyes are manifest, so there is no science there. I don't know what vision we have of science, but for me there is no science, okay? There is no science and there is not even technology. And all the Pakwash activity has that to do with the idea of not how to build nuclear weapons, but how to dismantle them. And you don't need science to dismantle nuclear weapons. You need to you need the political will to reduce to reduce the role of nuclear weapons and to reduce the number of nuclear weapons. And the risk. And uh, well, we had some uh, contribution, scientific contribution in my youth. We made simulation about nuclear attack in all possible sophisticated ways. Fine, they had a the role. We can keep doing this. There was no problem. We did that in, in a time when there was no, no really such a thing in the 1980s. Frank, remember we had an exchange at the time with, uh, about this simulation? Sure. We can keep doing this, but this is uh, not really science. Now, true, we had yesterday, no, the, last week, we had an interesting meeting in Berlin, organized by the Berlin Pakwash uh, group, by the German Pakwash group, about uh, um, cyber security. As a, yes, after Stuxnet in, in Japan, we had uh, the, the idea, with, with, with the idea that uh, um, Maybe cyber, uh, I mean, informatics can be used in order to create sabotage. That's something that should be really followed up. And I think this is something which I think uh, there is a degree of science. But then you need to have computer scientists to help. I'm not a computer scientist. So science is very much precise and specific. We can discuss about global warming. And if there is no 
competence of this we can discuss about like in this paper we can say okay it's a serious problem so i think that in this sense uh, uh, science should not meet, should not um, should not really uh, taken as uh, the reference in general i would say i make a joke science science in general is appreciated specifically by non-scientists and then uh, they consider it is consider a way in which the, the activities become a little bit more objective. We have to be clear about what science is and what science is not. Uh, Paolo, I do not mean to be little no, but just the world that. affairs, but what I do mean is that if it is I, I, a I, 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 conference on science, science and world affairs, just remove the science if it's not important. What, what is your profession? I am an environmental scientist. Okay, good. Then you can... Okay, 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 if you are a member of the world, then fine. Then you have to find someone of your, the sim similar to you, uh, to you, your expertise. That is not what I say. What I say is, if it is okay, a okay, conference on it's science it's and world it's not, it's not that just they, remove the science. That's all. Call it the part. What's I think let Paolo uh, complete his statement. Uh, I think it's your first time at the Power Watch meeting. You will find the working groups give a lot of space for the discussion of science. And I think when you go into the working group sessions, you will realize that. So, Paolo, please continue. I mean, it's, uh, the, the title of our organization is there for since 1957. I mean, I'm not changing the title of the organization. <laughs> Even though there has been a, a development, an evolution, that's normal. In terms of uh, the local activities, uh, uh, fine, no problem. The, the issue is that I did, when I said that there are two, three staff people, I did not put myself into the staff since I'm not paid by Pankwash. Um, I was just making a point about the uh, limitation of our organization capabilities and the fact that you are a network. So basically that's what I say, exactly it was in the direction. We are a network of people that do certain things. I was trying to summarize what, in my opinion, is the most relevant issue globally dealing with, since we have a tradition of dealing with nuclear confrontation, the of conflict, conflict resolution, this is not something that is at the theme. I did not get into the details of the of the of the, of the, of the meetings that we have. Just make some examples. I think um, absolutely true. I mean, if there is a, if there is a specific contribution, then we can have a discussion about that. We are in fact the council exactly for this purpose, so we can have uh, specific uh, ideas. Um, the no position the, the website as some space exactly for the local activity of the council, of the, of the Papuash group. Yes, we are a network, meaning that the local, uh, is it the, the local, the, the local places, the local, the, the nation, they have, a, they have a role to play. They may be a little bit peculiar on their own situation. That's absolutely fine. It is not a discussion. It, I cannot, in half an hour, present a not in more than some general ideas which I think I've been following as in, in, my, in my capacity. It cannot be, it's not completed by definition, but I think that the main point is this. If we're dealing with nuclear weapons and if we're dealing with the, with the, with the risk associated with nuclear weapons, in this very moment we have to deal not only with <coughs> strategy, nuclear disarmament and so on, but also with conflicts which are relevant in the situation where nuclear weapons are present. And Egypt is certainly one of these relevant situations where conflicts are there and nuclear weapons are in the next door. Thank you so much.